Okay, so welcome to another Blunt Lab video. Today we're doing a 2018 tour of my network, and as you can see, it's changed quite a bit. We have a 4U rack here. These are really designed for like audio setups, but it works just fine for holding two network switches and that cable management thing. Eventually I'd like to get a 1U router to put in there, but at the moment I've got a router stack which I'll show you in a minute, but the start of the switches, so as you can see we have the same two switches I've had for a while now, we have a HP 2810-24G which is doing our main core switching, it's only a layer 2 switch but it's fully gigabit, 24 ports of it, and it's almost full as you can see so yeah, a lot of people said you're an idiot for buying such a big switch, but I've nearly filled it. There is three, yeah, there's basically seven free ports on that, maybe eight if you look carefully. And above we have a HP 2520G-8-POE, which is a really long name, but it's an 8 port gigabit PoE switch so that's doing a lot of the PoE stuff in our network. We have I think these two are IP phones and these three here are access points um, yeah, and we have a 2 gigabit basically trunk between these two um, they're not stacked or anything, they're literally it's just a trunk between them that carries all the VLANs and all of these network cables, as you can see, go into this cable management bracket. Some of them come out and loop kind of neatly into this patch panel here, which is somewhat labelled, somewhat not. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a bit messy in this corner. As you can see, all of these network cables go out. Ugh. They go up and around. There's the old Sophos XG box, which isn't running right now. But yeah. And then some of these cables come out this way, some go over there, under, and here's one of the routers, which I will go and talk about in a bit. So yeah, in the near future I'd like to replace both these switches. I'd like to have one big 48 port PoE gigabit switch, but they're quite loud, and I'd also like layer 3 eventually, because, you know, learning and stuff, but this this little setup works quite nice and ironically I paid more for these bloody rack mounts for this top switch than the I paid for the switch uh, but yeah, it's a nice little setup I have here I just love these switches, HP make good switches unfortunately Aruba is what they're now called and they're terrible if you ask me I mean they're the same like command line, they're the same everything but they've ditched lifetime warranty on them I believe and they're also they're just boring looking, they're just black I mean I like the grey colour scheme I think the HP name is a bit more recognisable than a Aruba but hey can't win everything and I guess they're not going to win me um, I'm probably going to change for Cisco eventually and we are around the corner from the switches. The switches are in the back there. You can kind of see the end of the unit there. So yeah, this is right around the corner. I was around there earlier. Yes, it's this room's a mess. So we have three main routers here. So we have two Cisco 1841s. The 1841s are fantastic routers, by the way. They're great for learning with. And we have a Cisco 2821 as well. So let's go over all of these routers. As you can see, they do have labels on them. This top 1841 is the VPN server, so I can remote in. Although I'm probably going to axe that for an ASA soon enough because any connect is better than IPsec v1 or something garbage that this has. It's probably not very secure to be using this. Oh well. And below that we have our main router, so this is doing our DHCP, our inter VLAN routing, it's doing, what else, it's doing the, like, PPPoE, well, actually it's PPPoA, because we've got DSL modem straight on board, it's a WIC 1 ADSL, so it's quite an old little card, but it works well enough for us, because on our area, 
ADSL and ADSL2, they're basically the same speed. So, yeah, that works quite well. Um, fun fact, both of these routers came from service providers, so they was like ISPs, using them as managed routers. And they both come with these absolutely tiny 32 meg compact flash cards with a SP services image on them, which is quite interesting. They had configs on them and everything. These were used for leased lines, which is kind of makes kind of sense really. You've got two Ethernet ports, one goes to the leased line, one goes to the internal network. So yeah, they're quite decent little routers for the price I paid. Another fun fact, this top one is actually made on my birthday in 2009 because that's an interesting fact. So the bottom router here is as you can see labelled VoIP router, this is a Cisco call manager. It is literally a bog standard 2821, it's got no PVDM modules, no AIM modules, it's not even got any interface cards in it. I do have I have a FXS card here for four analog phones. It's not an FXO card, so that's literally for connecting an analog phone. Um, but this router doesn't have any PVDM modules, so I can't use it, and I don't really know why I'd want to hook up an analog phone anyway. Um, but that module's for my um, training series, I guess you could say, or whatever, the series on doing Call Manager. Um, which isn't over by the way, it's just I haven't had time to really put effort into it at the moment. I've got one extra episode that is filmed and everything but it's not edited. So yeah, this is doing Cisco Call Manager. We have various IP phones around the house. I've got a 7975 on my desk, there's a 7960 by my bed, there's a 7941 in our kitchen. And it works with a little intercom. It's also hooked up to a SIP trunk, so I get incoming calls and I can do outgoing calls. And it's also hooked up via another SIP trunk to my Asterix box, which is being used for voicemail and various other little services, like wake up phone calls, which is, which works, it's lovely. So that's a nice little setup there. Next to the router setup we have this which is a DL380G7 server. Yeah, and a PDA there which is turned on. So this server's running CentOS 7 with the over hypervisor basically on it, and this is running a bunch of VMs for Plex. Uh, we've got a few web servers on there, a VPN client on there, and it works quite well, I found. So yeah, that's a nice little server that lives literally next door to the routers there and in the middle we have label print so here we have one of the VoIP phones this is the one on my desk here it's the 7975 and as you can see I've pretty much almost filled up all them extensions there so we've got a single line page park and then we have a bunch of speed dials for various things yeah nice phone these very Nice. My only complaint with the 7975 is the image is really blue on them. Unfortunately, the camera seems to be showing it just fine, but in person it's really blue. Um, but this rainbow seems to work fine, and it matches the watch sitting next to it. So, yeah. Um, if you've watched some of my older videos on the Cisco IP phones, you would have remembered I had a 7971 here originally, and uh, it died backlight failed in it which is annoying but yeah the 7975 dropped massively in price so I bought one of these and I've got a spare one somewhere here's another one of these IP phones this is right next to the bed it's just mounted on the wall here as you can see it's a 7960 so it's a rubbish phone but as you can see I filled up every extension on there it's got two lines on it for some reason I think one might be a shared line with another phone somewhere. But yeah, this phone literally is in bed basically for wake up calls and to answer incoming calls from like the kitchen without having to get out of the bed because I'm lazy. But yeah, 
I mean, I've got enough IP phones, I might as well just put a spare one wherever I want. So we have another Cisco 7960 IP phone here in the master bedroom. It's literally just here to work as an intercom. Basically, that's why there's a bunch of speed dials on it. Um, but as you can see, it appears to be in the call group for me because it's got like four new missed calls on that. Oops. And yes, this sideboard is incredibly dirty. That's why I put a 7960 here. And here we have one of the final IP phones. It's a Cisco 7941. And as you can see, this is so simple. You've got extension and you've got a button to ring me. Which works quite well. Yeah, and this is really well installed. As you can see, it's just wire taped along the wall. And it goes into a power line adapter of all things, but it seems to work quite well. I haven't had any issues with it, so yeah. And the reason I put this phone here is because the on hook handle is broken. I can lift the handset off and it doesn't recognise it, so it makes sense to just be sitting here as an intercom basically for a single button, just press it and it rings on answer phone. Answer phone? Speaker phone. I got there in the end. For Wi-Fi, we're using Cisco Aeronet access points. These are Cisco 3500s. We have two of them in use at the moment, and they work quite well. This one also doubles as knife storage, because who doesn't need to store knives in their stairwell on an access point? So what you can barely see, and probably not hear over the noise, is in there we have a Cisco 1041 access point. This is working as a wireless bridge to a TV box in there, which you also cannot see. This is a pretty messy cupboard, but yeah, that access point works quite well. So here we are back in that loft room where the switches and routers are, and we have two access points. So we have another Cisco 3500, and we have a Cisco 1130. Now the 1130 is literally just broadcasting an SSID for some PDAs because I do a lot of playing around with like the old symbol and zebra PDAs and they simply hate these Cisco 3500 and 1142 access points I think they either hate 802.11n or WPA2 with TKIP or something so yeah the 1130 is temporary installed just for that. So what you can barely just see there is a IP camera. It's a dedicated Micros 2010 housing and inside there's a Honeywell IP camera. It's looking down at where our car park is and on the very corner which you definitely can't see there's a dedicated Micros PTZ dome that's hooked up to an Axis encoder so this makes up part of our camera system. We have an XProtect server basically. So there's two other cameras in this setup, but I'm not going to show you them, I just thought I'd point it out that I do have a camera system installed, just because why not? It's all power over ethernet, basically the IP cameras goes to another PRE switch, which I haven't shown in this video. And it works quite well, I like it. So that concludes the 2018 tour, so yeah, we're back where we started. and. Ultimately not a ton has changed. I did go over the VoIP and Wi-Fi setup which I didn't do in any of my previous videos and we have changed some of the routers but not a ton has changed in like the switch area here other than it's a lot tidier now. But yeah, that's why I haven't really done many update videos, I've just been stacking the updates on. There is a few things I haven't talked about here which is the other two servers I have. Um, I showed them in my previous tour, I believe, and I didn't show them again simply because nothing's changed. It's literally still two servers and a network switch on a cupboard. So, yeah, go back to that previous video if you want to see that. But, yeah, I will hopefully see you in another video. I do hope to get more of the Cisco Call Manager videos out soon as well. I just need to find time to edit them, because they have quite an involved editing process. It's not just cut and splice video clips together. There's a lot of like text and stuff that you have to add, and a lot of voiceover work. So yeah, that'll be done soon enough. Catch you next time.